Okay, so I'm so excited to come to you guys today and have Hannah with me again. And I don't normally say this, but like it's exciting because it's my birthday and I get to be with Hannah and it's snowing outside and there's just so many astrological things that are going on. And I'm such a novice and I can't wait to learn more with everybody else out there today. So I'm going to ask some questions, but I'm also going to just lean on Hannah to to bring us things that I wouldn't even know to ask. And um, at the end, she has this awesome class. I'm going to have her share that you can join us in over the weekend. So Hannah, I'm just going to hand it over to you to start us off wherever you want to start for today. And then I can get into some questions. Awesome. Thank you. I'm starting off with happy birthday to you. <laughs> You're sweet. And thank you so much for inviting me again. Thank you so much for just, you know, giving me an opportunity to talk about astrology, which is my biggest passion. And at the same time, I could be talking about it for hours. So you're going to have to stop me too and tell me <laughs> enough is enough. Um, and the other thing is happy equinox. You know, we just had the, the equinox at two days ago, which for those who don't know what that is, is when the sun is exactly at zero degrees Aries and zero degrees Aries opens. If you look at the Zodiac, the, the astrological mandala that looks like that pizza with 12 slices, right? The initial point of the starting of the wheel is zero degrees Aries. So the sun is right there. So it's like the astrological new year, which is Again, it's to me, it's that energy of January 1st, mm -hmm. excitement, enthusiasm. It's a brand new year. It's a brand new adventure. Um, it's a new potential, right? So it's a new cycle. So I just wanted to say that happy equinox to us all. I came with my flower, you know, attire mm -hmm. uh, to, to convene that celebration. And I also wanted to, I love ritual. I love bringing like a ritual side to my life in, in, in this connection of stars and like cosmos, what's out there with the, with our everyday life. So I think ritual is such a part of it uh, to make, to make us feel connected to something that we're going to like something that's happening out there mm -hmm. than to bring it here. So one of the rituals that I, I actually did that and I been telling people about it is to write a list of the things that you would like to bring into your life. And, and if, if there was no limitations, if mm -hmm. anything was, because everything, anything is possible. So if you were operating from that, from that level of like, I can create and bring into my life anything I want. So create that list and then you like nicely fold it and then you plant it, you go in a garden and you put it under the earth, just like you're planting a new seed and then you, you know, make it all nice. And then you, let it and then you see how that's gonna unfold you know in 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 your life so I just love doing this right in the beginning of the year and just riding that wave of birth creativity like energy and a new cycle um yeah so we have we just had the equinox we are in the eclipse season right now which is really important we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that we have mercury that is just going into the retrograde motion um and that's gonna you know it's gonna be in retrograde for three weeks so we always I mean we have a lot going on we always have a lot going on um but yeah you tell me where you wanna where you want to start with so I had some questions just from myself and then for other people that are in my life talking about and I know we're moving more towards the planets going into Aries you were saying but there were a lot of planets that were in Pisces. And I I found that some people were saying, oh, this is a dreamy, mystical, magical time. And there were a few of us who were like, that's not how we're experiencing it. It's felt very like you're walking in uh, like a dark hallway or swimming in the depths of the ocean. You don't know what's coming at you, what's around you. And yeah. you're kind of like blindfolded and it feels a bit cold. So um, like energetically cold. So 
what do you say to that? I guess is like, do different signs have different experiences with the, where the planets are or what are your, what's your thoughts? Absolutely. But what you did was without knowing that you did that, you described Pisces <laughs> <laughs> because Pisces has to do, Pisces is the one, just think about the signs as an experience. Mm -hmm. So Pisces, when you get to, when you have a lot of activations in Pisces, you are in the experiencing, you're experiencing life in a way that's beyond your control. Mm -hmm. So that's why Pisces has to do with oneness consciousness, with we're all connected, we're all one, it's spirituality. Like it's all these vast, abstract things. And when you are in that experience, you really don't know what you're going to get. You know, it's going to be the dreamy reality where things are just kind of happy, happening magically. You don't have to put much effort. Things are just coming in and you're flying. You're, you're, you're riding that wave and, and, and going with the flow of things and things are happening. It's positive and it's nice. Yes, that is pi very Pisces. Mm -hmm. But it's also the experience like when you don't when you're not in control of things, you can also be blindfolded, just like what you said, you mm -hmm. know, it's the you don't have that clear picture of what's going on, what to do next. And it's, it's out of your control. You know, you can't really tell, uh, but that's also part of the Pisces energy and experience. And, and at a very deep level, it calls us to say, to really be in a space where we're trusting what's happening. Mm -hmm. That is the biggest lesson of the Piscean school, right? The Pisces school is surrendering to what is. Mm -hmm. And we're not, we're not conditioned to do that in, in our Western in our society. society. Yeah. <laughs> so it's hard, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's hard. And it's really nice when everything's going well and you're like, oh, I love this Piscean dreamy. I love Pisces. But when it's not, you know, when you have the, the 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 other side of it when things are happening in a way that you're out of your comfort zone that you can't really plan and tell what's going on and and it's it's a, it's hard it's unnerving right it's difficult and yeah so we have you know we have Saturn in Pisces right now we have Venus in Pisces we have Neptune in Pisces Mars is actually about to enter Pisces <laughs> uh, today actually. So yes, there is a lot of Piscean energy, but then at the same time, there's a lot of um, Aries energy. This eclipse is all about um, this axis of Libra and Aries. Mm -hmm. And Aries, we have Mercury in Aries right now. We have the sun, you know, that's the equinox. The sun is in Aries. We have another um, body called Chiron that's also in Aries. Um so and then and then very in, in a few days, uh, Venus is going to enter Aries. It's going to exit Pisces and get into Aries. So, <laughs> right. So there's a lot going on, and mm -hmm. um, so when you so there's a lot of Pisces that is very much about not forcing things and kind of going with the flow of things and kind of being in a more passive. You're you're doing your life from a more passive state right or kind of okay what's going on let me flow with things let me adapt to what's going on let me go with the flow even if the flow is a little right I'm blindfolded and it's foggy and I can't see what's going on and then Aries is the complete opposite yeah. Aries is like let's go, go. now <laughs> exactly. Uh -huh. exactly like move forward action get going create Mm -hmm. It's it's not passive. It's very active. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how do you make sense of these two energies? And you're going to see them in your life in different ways. Or sometimes in the in the same context, you're going to see both. Mm -hmm. um, it, it it in worst case scenario is like, not worst case scenario, but most challenging case scenario is you need to make you need to take action about something that's going on in, in your life you need to make a decision but then you don't really know what the best way is because everything's so foggy 
and you're like, oh my God, I don't know. So it's, it's, a, you know, it's definitely challenging, especially in bringing the eclipse into this because eclipses are so powerful. Eclipse, uh, we have usually two, it's usually a pair, the solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse. But the whole period of eclipse season is extremely powerful. Um, and eclipse season is a time when things are happening mm -hmm. that, again, it's not usually, it's not under our control. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It, it totally makes sense. I mean, it, it seems like there's been a long period of time here and you could probably put time dates on it where we're being asked to not be in control and everything inside me says the surrender is really a co-creation. It's realizing we can lean into something greater than ourselves. And every time we move into that dark phase, it's asking us to, to lean in and to, to trust that there's something that has our back and is leading us somewhere. And I mean, from going from Pisces to this eclipse, I'm going to leave out Aries for the moment because Aries, I'm like, we're talking about a leader that's blindfolded, <laughs> like, you know, but I don't, I guess for me, like when that vision went through my head, I was like, it's a leader who's blindfolded, who's being asked to like lead from a level of trust and co-creation with the universe. And so um, I guess, what do you like, what do you say to that when I'm getting this vision? Um, I don't know. Yeah. What do you say to that? Well, that's a beautiful, I love the, the symbolism and it's blind. I, I do agree with being blindfolded and not knowing but it's as we surrender at, I think at the highest level, Pisces really speaks of our heart mm -hmm. and our compassion and the capacity to, first of all, be compassionate and kind to ourselves mm -hmm. and to the difficulty of this human existence. It's mm -hmm. not always easy. Yeah. Right. So to be, to start out with, to be compassionate and forgiving and kind to yourself as you are unfolding in this extremely complex human experience of, of, of life, um, I think that's, I think that's the starting point. And then to, to bring that to other people and to everything you do in the world, right? Um I do. I yeah. like. That. I just wanted to say with that, like a lot of people have said to me lately, they've they've had to sleep, like they're taking way more naps or they're sleeping longer, and it it's you know dialed all the way down to that. Like it is taking the time to listen to your body and to have the compassion so that you can keep showing up and to have that self love and and then not yeah. to come with guilt or shame or judgment to just go yeah, I'm going to nurture myself during this time. Cool. Beautifully said. And sleep is Pisces mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. when you are sleeping, you're letting, you're literally in this experience of no control, right? Mm -hmm. You're letting something that's much bigger kind of take over the show because when you are awake, you're like getting work done and cleaning the house, moon in Virgo, moon is in Virgo today. So you're going to be planning things and, and fixing things and, and, and working on your schedule. So it's, and then when you go to sleep, you surrender, mm -hmm. you let go, you connect to this higher consciousness that we are. Right. And then you do all these working. I mean, this, this whole conversation in itself, like you have to project and you go to all these amazing places and it's like your soul, right. is really, like your body is resting, your physicality is resting, but your soul is 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 in this place of ex yeah. exactly. So it that's Pisces. That's a great advice. Um, I think it's a great activity to be doing during a, a heavy Pisces moment. So you can because Pisces is really where we are all connected to everything. Mm -hmm. 
that you know speaks of oneness consciousness where we are the plant where we are the pillow where we are the 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 window where we are the snow so it's that you know when we go to sleep and we can kind of just let our personalities rest for a little bit and we can connect to Mm -hmm. um to this oneness i think it's also a really good way to navigate the the piscean energies um and then the other thing and it goes it takes us back to what you said about the eclipse and the darkness uh if we think about eclipses um if you've never seen the eclipse just like google it like eclipse picture it's it really is a period of darkness Mm -hmm. that we go through Mm -hmm. right so if we bring the the symbolism of okay i'm in this period where things are not well um you know i'm going through a period where i don't really know Mm -hmm. but if i surrender to it if i know that at a very deep and high level here my soul knows exactly what it's happening Mm -hmm. my higher consciousness really is awake and, and and just like the you know a dog before it gets its treat like the eyes are right right open and the ears are up and it's paying attention to everything and it's I think it's this moment when we can really trust that whatever is unfolding is at our highest interest even if it doesn't look so amazing even mm-hmm. if it doesn't look positive and because we're not wired to think like that we're not wired to think as something that's not positive being positive Mm -hmm. right we automatically think there's something wrong with us or life is not working for us or the planets are against it that's the one I I hear the most like oh mercury's out to get me or or the Pisces out to get me it's like no they're just informing us you know, it's back to what we talked about last time. It's like they're just informing us what is happening from from a, a, um, a higher perspective and then how we can best navigate, you know, the times and the energies. No, I love um, that. I just wanted to say, too, like that piece where, like, you know, obviously don't blame the planets, but also I think there's a lot of people that I've come in contact with in my work that are blaming themselves. They're like, why am I not as productive? Why am I not as positive or energetic? Why are all these ha- things happening? What am I doing wrong? Instead of just really leaning in and going, you know, th- those are the conversations I have with them, like lean into this is a time to nurture yourself so that on the other side, things can happen. But also in this, like you were just, we're talking about when you're letting the body and the mind rest, the soul is, is getting the chance to explore and to co-create with consciousness. And so it's like, there's a lot that's happening Mm -hmm. if you stop resisting it. So um, I really wanted to bring that aspect in because I think there's, there is such a fight that people have with themselves of what am I doing wrong or what is it doing wrong to me, whether we do shame or blame, you know, neither one mm-hmm. of them. So I appreciate you bringing that up. No, thank you for bringing that up because um, there's so much conditioning mm-hmm. of the way we need to be right. Mm-hmm. The, the what we need to be doing. Um, and, but what if we, what if we knew that we were very well positioned Mm-hmm. even if it didn't look like it mm-hmm. um and you know we are with this eclipse and the aries energies they speak so much about really getting in touch with ourselves mm-hmm. me it's you know for taking the other out of the equation just for a little bit what do i want what do i like mm-hmm. what am i passionate about You know, if it's about work, like, am I fulfilled by this job? Mm -hmm. If it's in my relationships, like, how, how, how am I doing my, in my relationships? Am I happy in this marriage with this person, you know, in this dynamic? So it's like, it's really asking us to look at ourselves, Mm -hmm. like, 
and really, first of all, under like get in touch with who we are, who we want to be, what my dreams are, what my desires are, what my needs are, what do I want to do. It's like, what, who would you be? I think that's a great question for, for the time we're in. Who would I be if there was no external pressure or judgment or expectation or responsibilities? Like, who, what would I be? What, what would I create? What would I be doing? Mm-hmm. Right? And then consciously taking action towards that, even if it's going to be five minutes a day where you can give yourself those five minutes where you're really, truly connecting with you. Mm-hmm. If you can do it more, if you can, like, because, I mean, this is Aries is clearing up the past. It's saying, again, it's saying enough, mm-hmm. no more. I'm done with this. I'm done with this job. I'm done with this person. I'm done with this pattern. I'm done with this thought. I'm done with this conditioning, whatever the conditioning is. I'm done with thinking that there's something wrong with me that there's something wrong with my life, that I'm doing life wrong, that I'm being a, my, 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 my job as a human is, is not being well done. Like, what if we can say enough of this and starting a new cycle that is more connected to who we are? And I know these are really big, like, words that I'm saying, but it can be as simple as, wow, I want to learn the violin, mm-hmm. you know? Where can I learn? How can I make a, how can, Aries is so much about action. Mm -hmm. Like, what can I do in order to do that, to make that happen for me? I want to, and of course this can be big. I want to create a new business. I want to quit this job and quit this relationship, quit this pattern. Like it can be very uh, big as well, but it can also be very subtle. Mm -hmm. Um, So, and if we bring the Pisces into this, what how, what if we can be in this dynamic where we are really flowing with what's coming through in our lives and then taking action towards like what it, the because the Pisces is being informed instead of informing. So if we're being informed that something is not working anymore, for being informed that maybe I'm not fulfilled by whatever that is, my job, my relationship, my hobbies, my purpose. And then the Aries is like, then I make action towards something else. Mm-hmm. Then I consciously create a new job, a new cycle, a new relationship. Even if I don't know how, I make one step. You know, I love that you're like, you know, take the time to explore that. And, you know, we, you know, sometimes it is a big step, right? But sometimes it is just little increments. And I always say to people, like one one degree change, if you're on a train track, a one degree change, you're going to go in totally different directions over time. It just takes consistency. And so sometimes people can't can't make a big change, but if they do that one degree change on a daily basis, um, and use the energy. That's what I love. Cause I think some people who are listening to this, they might be thinking, but I'm not Aries, but what you're saying is you have the Aries energy available to you right now. And so you, you could be whatever sign you could be Pisces, right. Who's like mystical and dreamy and collected and, you know, soft. And it's like, but you can still use that energy right now. And I'm going to use the energy for us to pause for a second so I can plug in (laughs) to to the source. So hold on one second, everybody. (laughs) One second. All right. On that, we're back. (laughs) We can get back into our conversation about using the energies of Aries and Pisces. So, yeah, you were getting into a little bit about the eclipses, too. Did you want to go there? where, Where would you like to go now? Yeah, I just want to say one thing about what you just mentioned, because I also think it's really important that people know that even though there's going to be certain signs that you are going to express more than others, but we are, this is for every human being alive, we are all the 12 signs. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So they're going to come in different ways. They're going to come in different, you know, it, it's, it's very complex, but mm -hmm. most people just know their sun sign. Mm -hmm. When they say, for example, like I'm a Pisces, I'm an Aries, I'm a Taurus, but all the other planets of our solar system were when the person was born were in a, in a sign. Mm -hmm. So you bring all these energies to your life. You are Aries, you are Taurus, you are, you are every, we are all the 12, the, the 12 signs being the 12 forces of life that, that constitute that make everything in life. So there's that, there's your own personal constitution, but then Again, if we bring it to the astrological weather, that is the same weather for everyone. Um, when we have more, like, for example, we have right now we have a strong Pisces energy, we have a strong Aries energy. So, of course, that's going to be more on the forefront. And we're going to be interacting with these energies um, more than others. And that's the cool thing about knowing the astrological weather, either through an astrologer or you, the person learning astrology, I think, I mean, I'm so, again, I'm so biased, but I really think if we, if all of us, if we knew a little bit of astrology, if we could look at the chart of the day and be like, what's going on today? Just like you look at the weather forecast, then you can better understand it. Like how to, how to do the day, how yeah. to, how to produce that day, how to be that day. Oh, I, and there's a lot in Pisces. I know I'm going to need extra sleep. Mm hmm like something so simple as that. Oh, I know there's a lot of Aries. I know it's a time to be very conscious of my energy and getting things started. I mean, I personally, I chose this time to start my newsletter mm -hmm. because I was like, okay, this is a time where the Pisces is, I'm getting inspiration, mm -hmm. right? And the Aries is like, and then I make the move. And then I start and then I initiate something and then I birth, I literally birth my newsletter. So, it, you know, it is a time to get things started. So again, and it goes back to with the eclipse, bringing the eclipse into this. Um, and Mercury is there and I just want to bring Mercury and Aries because Mercury speaks so much about work, mm -hmm. employment, our professional lives. So this is a time when I think both, uh, both big two big themes, and I'm going to be talking more about this in, in the in Sunday, uh, my um, eclipse class that I'm going to be um, doing with a fellow evolutionary astrologer, Janine uh, Upame. And we're going to be talking so much. We're going to be talking so much about what the eclipse season is and why it's so important and where this eclipse, these eclipses, because there's two, uh, where they're happening. And they're happening in Libra Aries. Mm -hmm. So this is relationships. Like relationships are like are on the spotlight. Mm -hmm. Work with Mercury, work is on the spotlight. So those two themes are very, very big for all of us. Mm hmm for some people, a little bit more, right? Some people are, you know, some people might be breaking up. It's a time where they might be breaking up and saying enough. I'm going to get divorced. I can't do this relationship anymore. Or, the, or vice versa. I just met someone and I just started a new relationship and I just got married and I'm, I'm so excited. So again, we're starting new cycles. Mm -hmm. So it is in our best interest to reevaluate our relationships mm -hmm. maybe even if you're single what do I want to create what kind of relationship do I want to be in how have I been remember that Aries is always starting a new cycles so in order to start a new cycle more consciously it's nice for us to look back to the past and say how have I been in my relationships what mm -hmm. are my relationships dynamics am I over am I the over giver am I try to people please all the time do I want to make sure my partner is always happy right am I too flexible am mm -hmm. I getting my needs met and then the opposite some people are taking all the space in the relationship mm -hmm. right what about my partner's needs what about what, what they want what about our how is you know how is our communication Mm -hmm. How is the balance in this relationship? Is it well balanced? Is the give and the take equal? Mm -hmm. Right. And of course, it's so subjective. So, and that's why it's so like 
important for each person bring this to their own life and their own relationships. Same thing with work. Am mm -hmm. I satisfied with what I'm doing? Is it meaningful to me? Mm -hmm. Right? Is it, do I wake up excited? I mean, I get this. This is, I mean, I'm getting now, um, when I wake up in the morning, I can easily go into my computer and just start with my astrology. I love what I do. Mm -hmm. It lights me up. And I'm thinking, what wouldn't it be an, a, a much better world if everyone felt the same way about what they did, about their service, about what they're doing, what they're providing, what they're creating? And a lot of people, for that, for a lot of people, that's going to come through their hobbies, their kids. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be um, work related, but it is about work now as these activations are happening. So the big conversation here is about how are my relationships doing? How am I showing up in my relationships? How am I showing up in my, in my work and what I'm doing? And then the Aries, because the eclipse is happening in Aries, it's saying, what do you want to do? What do you want to create? What is the next step forward? Like time for action. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It does. It totally makes sense. And um, I think it's a, a fun one for people to to go through some of the questions that you've brought to pass for, you know, like brought up in this conversation for them to really look at them for themselves and and spend some time asking and it's okay to be in that space of not knowing and really leaning into the universe to say direct me because I think so often people go to the quick answer which is from the mind or from the programming of pleasing others or jumping through hoops of approval instead of really sinking in deeper and going what is it really that I'm here for what do I really want and looking at you know, am I showing up in ways that I think are good, but ending up resentful, you know, all those, yeah. all those things are indicators of whether it's actually your truth or not. Um, so it is, mm -hmm. you know, it's gotta be time to, to reflect during all of this and ask the question. So I yeah. love that you, you love astrology so much and you wake up and do it. You know, I, I feel the same way yeah. about my work. I'm like, I wouldn't have it any other way. I want to do it forever. Um, so, you know, for more people yeah. to feel that sense of fulfillment, um, this is the time to be asking that. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to add that, um, it is so much a time for reflection, mm -hmm. but it's also a time for action. Mm -hmm. It's so much about action right now. And maybe the action is about planting, like we talked in the beginning, planting your seed, like kind mm -hmm. of like like the action of envisioning your life. What do I want? Like the action of, but even the action of discovering and reflecting. Um, but especially with the eclipse is like, it can be a time where life is throwing things at you, right? I mean, just an example of this. Uh, I it was through an eclipse. Um, this was back in 2022. It was the day, I mean, the whole eclipse season is very powerful. So mm -hmm. everything that happens during the eclipse season, it's extremely, extremely important. But in my case, that one specific eclipse that happened on the day of the eclipse, mm -hmm. I lost my job. And that was where my, where my, my, um, most of my salary was coming from. So I mm -hmm. went into despair and, 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 um, negative, right? Oh my God, what's going to happen? But it was because of that because of losing that job that I was able to have a lot more time to put into my astrology. Mm -hmm. So it was the universe or life or God or the cosmos, whatever you want to call it, or my soul really pushing me and saying enough of this, you have a different role to, to take on now. And I, you need to trust that you will be supported in this because mm -hmm. this has to do with your own soul path. Mm -hmm. So Again, it was nice to talk about it now. Ooh, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> At the time, I was like in this deep, like, oh, my God, you know, this is awful. What am I going to do? So I wanted to bring this up because eclipses can also bring situations where you're like, oh, 
one out. And that and that's why it's this deep message of trusting that you are well positioned. And if you were not well positioned, life is gonna well position you <laughs> and put you on the right track. <laughs> and the surrender and, and the humility of it, like to 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 really accept that, that is Pisces at its best. And it's hard. Yeah. Right? I love the fact that though, like when you're talking about that, it's like if you can surrender and not fight or grapple with it, you don't suffer as much, right? That doesn't mean you don't, you know, struggle. Like if you're going to lose a job, you're going to be sad. You're going to be upset. You're going to, you know, have a lot of probably mental anguish, but the surrender allows you to be repositioned. Yeah. Yeah. And so I love that you bring that up and, you know, people can look at it and go, well, you know, I'm just going to say to myself, I'm going to surrender to something and trust that I'm going to be repositioned um, and then ask what actions can I personally take? Like, you know, yeah. and that, that asking I think is so important because then it's not just, I think I should, it's really being inspired into action. So, yeah. Yeah. And pay it and, and just, pay attention to the mind because the mind will try to trick you yes, thinking that you're doing life wrong. Right. If this mm -hmm. happened, then I'm doing life wrong. Well, that's the good thing. If you were doing life wrong, now you're well positioned for it. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the right. Mm -hmm. So, um, and again, it's, it's not an easy thing to do because that's not how we are taught to be. Right. That's not how our society and our parents and our school system, they don't teach us Pisces. Mm -hmm. They don't teach surrendering. They mm -hmm. don't teach not being in control. They teach you to have a plan, to have a goal, to do well, to get good grades, to make money. So the, the Pisces is kind of put aside. And even I wouldn't even say just put aside, but it's even looked as negative or not as strong. Right. Right. So, you know, when you say to be connected to the cosmos, like most people don't see the importance, the importance of it, right? They don't see how essential it is to, to sleep in that sense where, you know, where the, the, our soul, where our personality can kind of take a step back and then the soul is kind of running the show and mm -hmm. the personality is seeing like, but I don't want to go there. I don't want to do that. I don't want to lose my job. Right. right? I don't want to break out. I don't want to, whatever the situation that might look negative be. Um, but the, the, the choosing consciously to trust and to accept and to go with it and, and to try to put a, the least possible resistance to what's happening it's where the, 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 the diamond is for, for us, for all of us. Um, and, and just another thing, going back to what I was saying about relationships, I also just want to clarify that even though it's so much about romantic relationships, marriages, partnerships, but any relationship in your life, mm -hmm. work relationships, right? The, the, like how you are showing up in, in all the relationships, the relationship with your kids, the relationship mm -hmm. with your animals, the relationship with your friends. Um, so becoming aware of these, uh, what's going on there, the dynamics mm -hmm. and um, seeing what needs to be done, seeing what needs to be clear out and how you can show up in those relationships more you, more mm -hmm. authentic, right? Um, yeah, I hope that's, and so this is so much about what the eclipse is about, um, we're already in this period. Um, we're going to have our first eclipse, uh, March 25th, which is a Monday. Mm -hmm. And then April 8th, is it April 8th or 5th? No, I, 8th. April 8th. Yeah. yeah. Um, and in the midst of the eclipse season, Mercury is going retrograde, mm -hmm. which is a, is another thing that, Mercury retrograde always brings the message. It, it it does not bring the message. I'm going to ruin your life. <laughs> right? no. That is not what Mercury is saying. Mercury is saying, 
take time to review things, mm -hmm. right? Which is so much about what we're talking about here. Like as you are taking new actions, as you're starting new cycles, take the time to review, to reevaluate, to, to rethink about literally all the things that we're talking about here. How do mm -hmm. I want to show up in my relationships? How has it been? Mm -hmm. Am I satisfied? Am I fulfilled? How about my job? How about my, I mean, this is a great, we talked about sleeping. This is a great time to, for, to create art, mm -hmm. whatever art means to the person. Maybe it's painting, maybe it's dancing madly. Maybe it's um, taking art class. Um, it, it could be so many different things. Art is great. Sleeping is great. Nature is amazing. Um, like to you know the grounding the 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 sitting next to a tree um just uh, um gratitude is also another pisces um theme mm -hmm. okay there can be all these it's foggy and i'm blindfolded and i don't know what to do or what to go and things are and things are not unfolding the way i want to but what's 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 working what yeah. am i grateful for you know, I get to see the snow. Mm -hmm. I see it. I have, you know, my eyes, I can see things. Mm -hmm. And my body is functioning well. And I'm healthy. And my kids are healthy. And I have a beautiful puppy to play with, whatever it is. And I have, you know, I just made coffee this morning. And I love, it's one of my favorite things. I love the smell of fresh coffee in the morning. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Right. So like, what are the small things in your life that are working and we, we often take for granted? So that's another Pisces um, words of wisdom too uh, for all of us. Yeah, I mean, it like, I feel like there's a energy that you're bringing about that's really saying like, be here now, um, both with yeah. Mercury retrograde and then also with Pisces, it's like, be here now. You've spoken a lot about reflection, um, not just from the the point of like what's not working, you know, how am I not being myself, but like what is working? Where do I get to show up as myself? And you know, double down on those things, and you know, maybe real reevaluate and lose some of the others. But um, in that space, like there is just a natural growth when you're willing to be here now and embrace it. And, and then you have the energy and the restoration in order to move forward. Um, so. Yeah. It's really beautifully cool. said. I think the highest spiritual activity to me, mm -hmm. this is a hundred percent, my personal opinion is to be present mm -hmm. with what is, you know, we can go and chant and go and meditate in a cave and we can fast for days and we could go to India and, and, and work with a guru. Like we can do, we can consciously choose to develop our spirituality in our lives. We can go to church and whatever, go to the temple. But I think that the most important one is in, in, in many ways very hard and very difficult because we're not, we don't learn how to be present. Mm -hmm. Be present with what is, be here and now fully. Mm -hmm. And in the in the presence, and this is something that I'm, I'm not the, the best at, you know, I'm the one who needs to be done. What's the next thing? What's the next transit? Where are the planet? You know, I'm, <laughs> my mind is consciously like, doing 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 so the 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 practice of just be for a second and be present it's i think it's very powerful and that's also where you where you have the capacity to see the 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 synchronicities and things that you when you're so busy the mind when the mind is so busy trying to understand things all the time or trying to like working all the time um, to simply stop and be and be present to what is there's a whole world that kind of opens up to that mm -hmm. right and you start to see what's 
the, it's almost like a other layer of reality that's happening that is so subtle, but it's always there. I don't know if what I'm saying is making sense, yeah. mm -hmm. but like even the, you know, I do this every morning. I make coffee every morning, but today I said, I literally stopped and I was like, I love this smell. And it was always like this experience of drinking my coffee was completely different and mm -hmm. even, even more special than, mm -hmm. so it's just like, it's like a whole new world opened up and I was like, wow, I never even paid attention to this like consciously. So I just, that is very Pisces as well. Um, and yeah, I just, and I think we take it for granted so many times. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think in those moments, we can actually embody all the energies that are available to us when we actually stop to absorb them and appreciate and allow them to activate us or whatever. Right. And I think I, I love your perspective on all of this and how we can use the energies of the time. And I want to invite people to your class on Sunday. So I'm going to put this video up immediately today so that they can know how to get, get in touch with you for Sunday. Um, Sunday, what is the date? What's it? It, March 24th. So March 24th yes. of 2024. And if people are watching this and March 24th has already gone past, um, I'll have all your details so that they can find out, out about future classes with you or private sessions with you because those are so amazing. I cannot speak highly enough of both your classes and your private sessions. Um, and if you're, you know, some people are going to need help. I mean, I always need help in discovering more aspects of myself and really learning about how the stars and the planets and all of that help you to know yourself in a way that just makes it a little bit easier. Um, sometimes it's, it feels like a validation of, oh yes. And maybe I judged this part of me, but that's actually meant to be there. And so how do I stop judge, judging it and start supporting it? And I, I really feel like you give clear guidance with that. So um, anyway, let's go into a little bit of um, whatever you want to share about the class on Sunday. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being there. Um, I'm so grateful. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's going to be me and another fellow evolutionary astrologer, Janine Upeim. I'm hoping I'm saying her name correct. Um, it's a Norwegian last name. So we're going to do a little bit of a um, class about what eclipses are. And the cool thing about this, this part is because eclipses happen every six months. So mm -hmm. this is useful information every six months of your life. So we're going to talk a little bit about what the eclipse season is, why is it important, what to do, what not to do, kind of the practical side of it. And then we're going to focus on this particular eclipse, mm -hmm. talk a lot about the Aries and the Libra and what that means and all of that. And then we're going to do a, a, you know, a meditation, a little ritual around fire because fire, Aries is fire. So it's a, it's a ritual to really connect with our fire within in our flame that lives inside each one of us. And, and then there's also an option to see for the people that are there to see where the eclipse is happening in your personal chart. So to bring that a little bit more to the, uh, the person's life and context. Um, yeah, I would absolutely love to see everyone there and to be in this. I, I really, you probably heard me say this so many times before, but I think it's such a part of being human that we kind of lost and we're kind of regaining, which is to be in ritual together in these circles, uh, even through the virtual world. Because I think we were used to do it in the woods around the fire, but mm -hmm. to be again in a, in a community and to be celebrating and aligning with these higher energies in a way that's here and now and helping each other and helping ourselves and, and really coming together in community to do that. I think it's so important. It's one of my favorite things to do. I think it's so amazing to be, it's so much better than just me here in my room and my house kind of aligning just me when I'm in the group and I feel everyone's energy and everyone is a part of it. I just think it's so much more powerful and significant. So, so grateful you're going to be there. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. You're yes. Welcome.
Yeah. Yes, yes, there, yes. There, lots of people. My sister will be there. Lots Yay. of my <laughs> it's good. I'm so excited. So we want to invite anybody who's listening to join too, whether it's the one on Sunday or something in the future. And we'll come back to you another time and tell you about more things that are happening in astrology and really tap into Hannah and all of her knowledge. And I just thank you so much for being here with me today. So thank, thank you. you. You're welcome.